Wrestling fans from around the corner, around the world. I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm Mr. USA, Tony Atlas. It took him a second. Before, Always does. Before we get to this great full-length episode of Memories and Legends, check out some of our great friends you can help support the cause to keep more Memories and Legends coming your way. Infinity Key, a truly natural online language training experience. 25,000 minutes, that's what you'll need to invest. Invest 25,000 minutes with Infinity Key and we'll build you a portfolio of language experiences designed to accelerate your personal progress. The coach will help you strike the right balance between passive acquisition and active application of your target language. InvestKey's algorithms and coaches guide you along the clearest, quickest path forward on your journey to fluency. Visit www.infinitykey.rocks for more information and follow Infinity Key on Facebook at facebook.com backslash infinity key. Wrestling fans, check out the brand new lapel pin from our friends at Crimson Mask. Inspired by Stone Cold Steve Austin and Vince McMahon, it's Bang 316. Only $8 each or two for 12. If you think it makes a great holiday gift, give me a hell yeah. Get yours today at crimsonmask.bigcartel.com. Houston on Monday, December 3rd. The New Era Monday Night Raw returns with a massive main event as Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose collide for the Intercontinental Championship and Braun Strowman battles Drew McIntyre one-on-one. Plus, don't miss Wanda Rousey, Bobby Lashley, and many more. It's WWE Raw live in Houston Monday, December 3rd. Tickets and ringsider packages are available. He is the people's champion. The Brahma Bull. The Great One. And this... Finally, The Rock has come back! ...is his story. Journey alongside the millions. In this definitive guide to... The most electrifying man in sports and entertainment! See The Rock... Like you've never seen him before. But the Rock is cooking. The world of the Rock. Available now. Green Bay on Friday, December 7th. Be a part of the hype as NXT Live brings the action. See the hottest NXT superstars, including NXT champion Tommaso Ciampa, Adam Cole, Alistair Black, NXT Women's Champion Kyrie Say, EC3, Johnny Gargano, North American Champion Ricochet, Velveteen Dream, and many more live. It's NXT Live in Green Bay on Friday, December 7th. Tickets are available. This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL, and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. from the control room to here at MWF Studios in downtown Melrose, Massachusetts. Welcome to another installment of Wrestling Insiders. I'm Dan Marotti, joined by longtime MWF executive, Mr. Dave Cotter. What's going on? He has the plow set up on the front of his truck. He was able to make it here this That's week. That's right. All um, that snow we got. You know, we were ready to call up the National Guard last week to rescue you with the, yep. the giant snowstorm we oh, had. Oh, we had a huge one. We did. All right, enough. Enough with it. All right, I already told you. Leave me alone. All right, we're going to do the headlines. For two weeks worth. Two weeks worth of Okay. Headlines. So what we, we might be a little behind. You might know some stuff, but we're still going to give it to you. Uh, the first thing was Enzo Amore showing up at Survivor Series, sitting in the front row dressed like E.T. What did you think about it? If it, it, 
it was as described a publicity stunt. It worked well enough for him. I got everybody talking. Did you see it when you the match no, that? No. You didn't see him? Oh, I did just because they were panned on that. And then you seen the crowd switch. The camera switched to the opposite side. But because I seen him on the chair standing up, it looked like he was wearing one of his old school shirts, but he wasn't. It's a sh clothing line he had. And um, yeah, he was up there screaming, S-A-W-F. Oh, my God. How I, Twitter blew up with it. And I saw people's cell phone versions. Did you see the lady rip him down from the chair? You know, honestly... I'm not trying to be negative towards WWE, but, I mean, they, he could have landed on someone and hurt a fan right. in the role behind them. I don't think they needed to go to that did extent. Did you see he's banned him. from the Staples Center now for life? And I don't know what he did wrong. Me either. I don't know. How does that work? I was going to ask you, why would WWE do that? Because if he bought a ticket, isn't he allowed well, to? Well, look, he showed them up and was trying to embarrass them. But and he was he, successful at it. But, if but he I, mean, I don't a, think he broke a law. Right, that's what I'm saying. But if he bought the ticket, though, technically speaking, if he bought a ticket, can he cheer and do what he wants there, even though he worth it? Can he be there? That's what I'm saying. I, I was amazed that that was the outcome of it. He didn't hurt anyone. No, that's what I he mean. He didn't go into, I mean, he, did he interfere with people's view? Right, he went to sure, business but himself. I mean, there's losers that come with signs that Oh, do my that. God, yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> but... As far as Zamore, I'm sure he wanted to get people talking. And what right. did he do? He got people talking. He got people sure. talking. If he was Brian Pillman, he'd do it again. Right. Oh, yeah. I can't imagine WWE is going to go to the extent of having signs printed that say, don't let this man right. into the Picture. venue. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But um, if that was his goal, would it be worth? I mean, I don't even know if they had him served with a, a trespassing or anything yeah. like that. But would it be worth a night in jail to get that kind of publicity showing up at an event? I would say, yeah. I mean, I think it's it was great. Everybody went crazy on it. Like, I seen it. That's what I mean. What he did was very successful. Yeah. yeah. I seen it, and then all of a sudden, I'm looking on Twitter, because, you know, when you're checking your phone, I'm looking, oh, my God, like, this got a reaction. Then when I seen the lady pull him down, he stumbled over the chairs, and she they showed more, because somebody was following him, like, with the camera, showed him, yelling at him. He's like, what did I do wrong? I bought a ticket, and screaming. That's why I wanted to get into really? it. Really? He did nothing wrong, yeah. other than he tried to embarrass them. Right. Is there a law against trying to embarrass WWE? I wouldn't think so. No. There's people that can say WWE did a great job on Raw this week, but that's a different story for a for different, different time. Day. All right. Um, but, you know, Enzo was successful. Yep. Uh, moving on, we had uh, AJ Styles' contract is going to be up at December 31st, 2018, the end of this year, and he still hasn't signed a new deal. And I was reading that he wants a Randy Orton-style kind of contract because he's worked so many dates this last year that he wants something like that. What do you think they're going to end up doing with that? Well, he is a man in his early 40s. You know, he's been... Well, my main thing is, do you think WWE's going to give him that, or do you think he's going to end up saying... I think they'll meet somewhere in the middle. Okay. He's not going... And if, if there's anyone that's listening to this to think he's going anywhere, he's not going, going anywhere. anywhere. Right. As far as them trying to meet on the middle, as far as the amount of dates go, you can work with that. Right. I mean, they've proven that their house show schedule can live without that certain right. guys on it. It, it. It's sad to say, but it really does... Other than... Someone like Cena in 2018, no one is really going to make a difference on the top right. of the house show lineups. Uh, moving on, Lars Sullivan is going to be moving up to the main roster. We've been seeing a little vignettes for him. I don't know if you watched him work in NXT at all. I think he's great. Yeah. This is a guy that I think could have been a main event during the Bruno San Martino era. He's I think he could have main yeah. event during the Hogan era. And I think he can be a main event in this era. He's yeah. big and thick. I was in the locker room at that show in Lowell back in August. And it was the first time I was really up close oh, to so the Oh, so you've guy. seen him. Oh. Yeah, he, I don't think he's quite my height, but he's really, really thick. Yeah. And I, I, th Good I was really with impressed. him and Braun? Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah I'm so sure I, he's going to go to Raw, but that's I, what I, was wondering. I think what do you SmackDown think? would be a better utilization. Yeah, because they're showing the point. vignette on SmackDown and Raw, so I was just wondering. They're if... making it seem like he's a, a free agent, yeah. so to speak. Okay. Now, yeah, see, cool. isn't that the small things that I have to pick up? I know you're going to say. But wouldn't it be the guys on the main roster that are free agents and the guys from NXT that you think would be drafted? Right. I mean, that makes sense. I, I can't know. disagree because I, I said know. the same thing about it. Like, why would you do that? If it's one thing, if it's a newcomer from, like, you know, an indie promotion, something like that that's coming, you know, like an AJ Styles who didn't go to NXT, yes. But the NXT should be. That's their farm system. It should be drafted. I, I can't argue Going with you. forward, I would, and I'm going by the structure of the new TV deal once, SmackDown starts on Fox. I would do an NXT draft in April, right after WrestleMania, and I would do whatever's going to switch rosters on Raw and SmackDown in September to coincide with the new seasons of the TV show. Yep. We're going to get into One that. One man's actually. opinion. Uh, moving on, we had uh, 
Somebody stepping back in the ring, lacing up the boots. Your boy Ken Shamrock, the world's most dangerous man. What do you feel about that? He's legitimate. Um, he has credibility. He doesn't look all that good. No. I mean, I don't know. I mean, what he's kind in shape, of... but for 50, whatever he is, yeah, he doesn't look. Yeah, he was talking with Bob Hawley at WrestleCon. The little, I, think, I don't know if you were there, but the little Dutch boy got to meet him. He was yeah. very excited. Uh, he told me he did. Uh... Yeah. He, he hide quite a bit. Oh, okay. But um, as far as Shamrock goes, I mean, where is he going to compete? In WWE, I, I don't know if he could pass the, right. um, the physical that they put the guys through. Maybe he could. As, could he be a big NWA guy? You know, that. We'll see. I just want to get moving yeah, right about I mean, now. I don't know why he would. I, does he need the money? I don't think so. I think it's just all about maybe he just wants to do. I don't know. Hey, you know what? Especially in someone that competed in a, a legit quote unquote sport, that competitive nature never dies. Mm -hmm. And if he can make a good payday at it, what, Why what's, not? what's he have to lose? Is it anything exciting? Not no. especially. I just, I just, it was a headline that I seen yeah. that I want to get. Um, also, Jay Lito signed a new contract with ROH. How come he doesn't? I know WWE's has offered him NXT and stuff, has offered contracts to him, but he doesn't. Ex you think he just likes the way ROH is run, or what do you, what do you think his thinking is? Always I don't sent? know what WWE would do with him. Yeah. I mean, even if per se he had a decent NXT run. I couldn't see them doing anything of note with him on the main roster. Yeah. What are they going to bring back, Black Machismo? No, obviously. I not, thought, but... and you know, I didn't. Usually, Black Machismo is a gimmick I'd hate, but you know, I love Black Machismo. Oh, it was great. It's almost like New Day. On the surface, you'd say that's one that Dan Marotti is going to hate. But when something is done well, and it's presented well, and the work is good, it can be effective. And Lethal was very effective as Black Machismo. Definitely. I just, I just want to see what he thought. I, I, I was hoping he would go to WWE just because I want to see him on another platform. But he is great in ROH, and I get it. I like watching him on there too. You know, he's a great world champion there. He's a great wrestler, man. Great technical wrestler. He's too. better off where he is now. Yeah, and I totally agree because the storyline. There's not many storylines, and he fits their, uh, their, their wrestling circle. You know what I mean? Um, another thing was Brian Pillman Jr. is uh, interested in uh, signing with the WWE soon. Good. How do you you? I would, I believe he was training with Lance Storm. Yep, you're right. Um, which is a great start. If I was WWE, I'd sign him sooner than later. The precise reason being, don't let him pick up any bad traits on the independent. It's crazy. Groom have you scratch. Have you seen what he looks like? Yeah. He looks like his father back in the early 90s. He's got the mullet with the, you know, the... Not as thick, yeah, but no. they do have similar appearances. Yeah, yeah. it's like crazy. Uh, I just thought it was kind of cool. And it's like know, a little I, throwback. I hope there's a guy that really makes it. I really do. I hope he does well for himself. He was robbed of having his dad virtually his entire life. Um, and to carry on the name, I'm sure his father would be proud of that. Definitely. Um, and he's also had some great talks with Stone Cold. I guess Stone Cold, he talks to Stone Cold, so that would be somebody that he's probably learning some of the field too with. Yeah, you know what? That's a great, great friend to have. Yeah, definitely. Um, moving on, reports. WWE wants to sign by the beginning of this year, coming January, is uh, Trevor Lee. From the X Division Impact, they're interested in signing him. Uh, Shane Strickland from MLW. I like him. He's good in ACH, who was in ROH, and then he's uh, been on MLW a little bit. I don't know how you feel if you like any. Well, you said you like Shane. How about mm. Trevor Lee? Have you seen any of his work? No? It's okay. fine. Okay. I mean, and the same thing for ACH. I, I, it's no one I'd go out of my way to be excited about it. He's adding more talent on the NXT. It's I almost think. too much. Yeah. I mean, at some point, you don't have enough room. Yeah. And the funny thing is, what do I complain about every week? Uh, the rosters aren't big enough, enough on yeah. Raw and SmackDown. They need to continue to add these bodies, but... Well, I was, like, Stone, I was a Stone Cold, what he said today. He was on his podcast. He was talking about that they're just so scripted that no one wants to just say no or try to do something outside the bubble and see if it clicks. Everything is just word for word. And he was saying that it just doesn't click. It's not clicking with the audience. And some of these guys that are, could be there just don't make that mark. You know, they don't change the script even a little bit to try to get something to stick. Everything is word for word. And he said that's what they're missing is that, that guy that will just say no and do something different, even if he goes against, you know. Nothing wrong with that, but that has nothing to do with my point. You could have 10 guys try and step outside the box and do something different. The, the rosters are too small with the amount of time they're trying to fill. And essentially, with a, raw, with a man and women's division on each show, there aren't enough bodies to keep it fresh. It's another reason why people are bored well, silly I think they just it. have reoccurring matches, and that's the reason why, Reoccurring matches, reoccurring storylines, reoccurring feuds. Right. Oh. 
But if they had the talent, I think they would have more time. Somebody stepped outside the box and was actually getting it drawn. Like Elias finally stepping out of the box, and they're making more time for him on the show. Before it was a little concert or whatever, just a throwaway match. They're giving him a little more and a little more time. So maybe if there was one of those guys that get a shot, maybe he would get a little more time, a little bit more time. I don't know. Well, you can do that successfully, but at the same time, that's not going to change the overall structure of the shows. Well, they could It affects if you... one segment that that person is in. Right, but if there's some better guys on the roster, you know what I mean? With some oh, better... I mean, I, I'm just, believe me, there's nothing wrong if someone does that. It'd be a great thing to keep it fresh, but it's still, they need quantity as much as they need quality. Right. and that's why. I think those are three good signings. I mean, I, I watch Impact, so I know Trevor Lee, he's a very good worker, yeah, and I mean, the two other guys are great. there's nothing wrong with them, but I mean, is there someone that says, oh, geez, this is a superstar. I really want to go It all depends watch. on, no. yeah, Shane Strickland's like a rich swan type. That's why, yeah. you know what well, I mean? Well, maybe that's why I like him. Yeah. Um, and they was announced that Survivor Series is going to be in Chicago next year. That will be pretty cool. I mean, I know, you know is ready now. Oh, you're going? No, Oscar, Oscar is ready. But you're Oscar going with Oscar? Oscar? No. Oh, okay. Um... Moving on, Impact, Mimi. Impact is discussing TV deals with uh, True TV, WGN, and Sci-Fi. That's interesting. I'm surprised Sci-Fi would be, and that's they're talking, so that means that they're interested, which is cool. I think it's great. I, I think Impact should be well, on TV. Well, I mean, anyone can have a discussion at any time with right. anybody. How serious they are, who knows? Would it be great for Impact to be on a, a real television station instead of the FOSS right. that they're on right now? Absolutely. <laughs> would it be nice for Impact to actually generate... Some revenue in North America from their TV yeah. deals? Absolutely. Has the program improved enough that people want to invest that kind of money in it? Maybe cheap. I think the problem they have when they go into these TV meetings is who can they present as their superstars and their top Man. guys? I mean, Johnny Nitro? Yeah. I mean, to us, I think Johnny Nitro is fantastic. I'd love to use him on some of our own events. I know. I know but is he someone I'm going to pitch to a national television network as my top guy? I think that's lacking. As far as the in-ring quality goes, there's a lot of good bodies they have oh, right they now. Oh, yeah. Definitely. But uh, moving on, uh, Braun Strowman's elbow injury. That was pretty gruesome looking if you've seen it um, the, the other night on Raw with the I bruiser. covered my eyes. Yeah, it was pretty yeah. gruesome looking. I guess he really uh, has something, and he's going to be out for a little bit, like out of action action, just do his little segment, yeah, things like weeks. that. Yeah, I didn't know. Do you know what exactly what happened to it or anything? I don't I know if it was some any. bone chips he needed to have cleaned out, but... Yeah, it was some, something they were preparing for. Yeah, it was so. a good way they worked it in, yeah, man. Yeah, it was a good angle. And they made, made some use of it. Because we didn't get to talk, we're not going to talk about that raw, but the blood, man, they're showing more and more blood on that show It now. was a crimson mask. But why are they, you know, they're usually not into that. I don't know, it's just different seeing all the blood. Usually they well, say... I, if you're going to say all that blood, I'm going to cover my ears. But it's not all that blood. There was a lot of blood in that segment. How much blood was there in that? There segment? was a lot of blood. It was like a big cut gash open. There was blood pouring out of it. So there was a lot of blood. And they don't show that usually. Maybe a little bloody nose once in a while when they have it. And they're like, oh, my God. But that was a lot of blood. Just like the week before with the Becky Lynch getting all the blood. I'm just saying they're showing blood on a PG television show that they haven't shown in for years. Didn't Chris Jericho and Batiste somebody get in trouble for having blood before? So I'm just saying on a PG well, show. But they, I'm just saying. They manipulated the blood. But what there I'm saying is they're showing blood again on yeah, a PG well, show. I'm just saying good. that might be a sign of change. They Jesus. want the blood. Well, you, you, you change things sometimes. Anyways, and another thing that I talked about is um, the owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars, the son, put some trademarks out there for All Elite Wrestling and All In 2, All or Nothing, different names for different uh, shows they could be having. And um, Mark Cuban of his Access Television is very interesting in having uh, his own wrestling show. So I don't know if this is something there. Working on, I know Jim Ross was talked about being part of it, Chris Jericho, the Young Bucks, Cody, Hangman Page, a lot of those guys are all interested in joining this. If this is something, how do you feel about it? Do you think it could actually work? I mean, that guy has a lot, a lot of money, way more money than WWE. Here is, and he does. Here is the thing, though, that modern era fans that weren't around the quote-unquote good old days aren't as familiar with is that there have been so many talks of startup groups so many talks of different networks that have wanted wrestling. It can lead to meetings, and it can lead to some smoke, but not much fire. Uh, it, would it be smart for these guys to register all those trademarks if they have the intent to go forward with it? Absolutely. What could have happened up until last week was you and I could have gone and registered right. them, and then what would they have done? You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, I totally get uh, it. Especially if they have this type of money behind them. But, you know, in this day and age, I think I told you on one of the previous episodes, Ted Turner had an interest and trying to see what it would take to generate a new professional wrestling program again once his no-compete was up with that whole 
the AOL, Time Warner, TBS, TNT thing. And it, at that point, it was about $250 million. And even if you have a lot of money, $250 million bucks, and this is 15 years ago, is nothing to sneeze at. And the one that I trademarked, I can't remember the exact name, but it was like something like Tuesday Night Dynamite or something. So they put, they, they obviously have the wheels turning on having a show yeah. and Tuesday Night, Tuesday Night Dynamite. I thought that was, you know, interesting that they already have like different names out and something like that so close, like, you know, having their own show. I just thought it was interesting. No, 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 no. They're not close to having their own show. They're not close no, to no, having no, a No, 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 not close to having their own show like that. I'm saying having names like that. They own a name, they, yeah, right, right. The close, like, you know, so if they do have some, they have their own show already, you know, named. You know what I mean? I just think it's interesting. So, as I've said, I hope it happens. But it's if it does happen, it's not going to happen anytime soon, um, and it's going to be a long time for it to be a viable success. If they have someone that's willing to eat that much money for it to be a success, it could be the best thing to happen to professional wrestling this century. Okay. And I hope it does happen. Well, we'll see what happens. I hope people are patient. Uh, more signing. WWE signed Walter. From the Indies, or the UK, I don't know if you've seen any of his work. He's a bigger guy. You'll like him probably. Yeah, no, he's, he's a, a big guy. guy. He's a thick guy. Yeah. Um, he's, a, he's a great worker. I don't know if you've watched any of his stuff on the Indies, but he's a great worker. You know, I like him. I think he's talented, and he'll do good. I Hopefully, I don't know if he's just going to be on the UK show, though. I think that's where they're going to keep him on, and then maybe eventually bring him up. But either way, I think it's a good addition to the roster. Uh, I was reading Matt Hardy's not retiring. He's still going to wrestle WWE. Whew. He's just taking some time off. I Ooh, know you're very excited about that. I was getting worried about that. About that. Yeah, Hopefully um, we can sell some more delete shirts. Yeah, definitely. I think that's a good game. no one will care about. Yeah, exactly. Um, I thought this was kind of interesting. Impact's not going to allow LAX to work. Evolve shows Evolve show that they're wrestling uh, the NXT WWE tag team. I thought that was... Well, if the intent is to have Impact talent from their quote-unquote A brand do jobs the WWE C brand, I can see why Impact wouldn't want that to take place. Yeah, I, I guess so. I just thought it was interesting that they just said, no, you know, you can't. Whatever, though, right? Um, John Cena is going to be back at the beginning of January for the Raw Band. He's going to start doing house shows December 26th, I was reading. But he's going to stop being back, and he's just going to be on the Raw brand. That will be a boost, I hope, for WWE. Interesting. I don't know what he's going to be doing. What's he, you have any ideas? Can I be honest and say it will probably be old by week two or three? I mean, Same I don't know. old, same old. He's been gone for what? Like uh, six months, five months, six months by the time he comes back. So, I mean. Well, if you don't count the, the European, uh, no, the Australian. I know what you're talking about, but I'm talking about like, you know, yeah. Yeah, no, better, no. He's got a tattoo months. now, too, so that's a oh, little does different. He? Yeah, he's he got a tat tattoo right there on his forearm, a Japanese thing. I don't know what the maybe hell that Johnny is. Maybe Johnny Cena, you got to match in one. Yeah, maybe. No, it, hey, it's always great to have John Cena around. He brings credibility with him. The more movies he does, the more TV shows he does, yep. that adds even more credibility. I'm excited about him coming back. Star power. Is there anything he's going to do that he hasn't already done before? We'll see. We will see. I hope. I hope. I don't have high hopes. I know you don't. I do. Because Cena's my man. Um, Bray Wyatt returned over the weekend at Starcade. Do you think that's because Braun was out, so they brought him back earlier than he suspected? Probably part of that. Maybe to just add a little surprise to the show. Yeah, because he was on to build Raw it up as a he's... special event. Yeah, so. The longer he's kept on television, the better. As I've said before, his, yeah. is that what I said? Yeah, you said on, but oh, off, That's what yeah. I mean, off television. This is a great talent, a great gimmick, but he's very boring in his presentation. And that's not necessarily his fault. Right. He's going through with what he's instructed to do. Right. But it's just, uh, they've castrated that guy. And I, I think, hate and the it thing because is, he's an elite talent. His gimmick was money, but yeah. they just, like you said, they messed it all up. I totally agree. Um, I was reading... That Becky Lynch, Conor McGregor stuff, they're talking about Conor McGregor maybe being at Mania. What do you think? You think he's, that'll pull the trigger there for him to be there? If he's a, her second, are you really going to care? I don't know. I think it'd be pretty cool having him there. For what? I don't know. He's not going to be able to do much of anything. No, but just having him there, you know, maybe being there a couple times. I mean, it was, I don't know. I think it'd be pretty cool to add a little spectacle to it. They always do something. He was going to work a match, I'd say, yeah. You never know. As far with as the... Becky Lynch's manager, I, no. no. I, no, no I'm saying, but I don't know what they'll do there. I'm just saying in general, because Becky's the one who's been tweeting out and he's been tweeting back. I'm just saying if they do something, regardless, it would be kind of cool. He's a promotional mastermind. I'll right. give him credit for that. Just got to watch but his mouth. What is he going to really add in that role? Eyes. Is there more to meet the eye to the idea? Oh. If there is an idea, maybe. As far as that being the role, I, I really know. don't I care. I like it. I think it would be cool. Um... And these both are ending with uh, Fox. Fox wants to keep the brand split once they get uh, 
there, and they also want Ronda Rousey on SmackDown when they do have it. So do you think Raw will I actually... think we know who's winning the Royal Rumble. <laughs> right. Well, do you think she's going to do you think she's going to end up being on SmackDown because they want it, or how do you think? Because she's so you know Raw's their A show, obviously. Let me tell you this. Yep. Come September of 2019. Fox is the boss. Right. You I think, can't add anything more than that. Well, what I'm trying to say is, you think they'll put, like, John Cena, she'll be on both shows or something? No. No? You don't think they'll? Do you think it'll just be strictly SmackDown? So, what it, so she'll be on SmackDown until the contract runs, are you saying? I don't know about that, but if Fox wants her from the beginning, she'll be on Fox. Well, I understand that, and I assume that, but I'm saying, like, there's no way she'll switch, or she'll do both. Everybody from time to time seems to pop up in some kind of an angle on the other show. But primarily, you know, 95% of the time, she'll be an exclusive to SmackDown, which is good. Well, that's it for headlines. That's all I got. It's big news this that week. That was, was big breaking. news. It was actually pretty dry this well, week. Well, like some of the women in this studio, but that's a different story okay. for a different time, wow. folks. If you want something moist, welcome to our world, friends. Monday night before Raw in San Diego, it's back. WWE Hall of Famer, Mr. USA, Tony Atlas, a bonus episode of Wrestling Insiders for you. Tony buries my buddy, John Bradshaw Layfield. He talks about a real-life fight he had with Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. Over on the BostonWrestling.com Super Site, the 7th Annual Paul Bear Holiday Headlocks is underway. We have the mega raffle going on, constantly adding prizes to that, along with our $20 merchandise bundle that includes a mystery WWE t-shirt, five autographed Legends photos, a something to wrestle with drink koozie, thanks to our buddy Bruce Pritchard, along with an autographed Christmas card, all for 20 bucks to help kids in need. We need to update Santa Claus's GPS to reach every kid, kid. Yep. in the world. A lot going on here. A lot going on with Memories and Legends with Tony Atlas. He's keep following us at MWF Project X on Twitter for the latest updates. He's got the Instagram game going Best now. Best wrestling come. And we got publicity galore scrolling underneath us on the YouTube version. So for MWF Associate, Dave Cotter, I'm Dan Marani. Until we speak again, folks, Merry Christmas. I'm going to risk offending someone. You and yours be well. St. Paul on Saturday, December 8th. Be a part of the hype as NXT Live brings the action. See the hottest NXT superstars, including NXT champion Tommaso Ciampa, Adam Cole, Aleister Black, NXT Women's Champion Kyrie Say, EC3, Johnny Gargano, North American Champion Ricochet, Velveteen Dream, and many more live. It's NXT Live in St. Paul on Saturday, December 8th. Tickets are available. I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm John Cena Sr. Let us tell you how the action and excitement of the Millennium Wrestling Federation can help raise cash for your nonprofit cause. Experience the action and excitement of the Millennium Wrestling Federation live in your city throughout New England, the tri-state area, down through the Carolinas, out to our friends in the Midwest and beyond. If your nonprofit organization is looking for an interactive turnkey experience while putting the fun into fundraising, you've met the perfect tag team partner to work with every step of the way. The MWF offers a variety of packages for groups of almost any size, from our live events at the Boston Garden, the Kowloon Entertainment Dining Complex, and the legendary Suffolk Downs, to high school gyms and function halls. We've presented live events everywhere and anywhere. Since 2001, the MWF's mission has been simple. Keep the kids off the streets. Under the leadership of President David Reese, we bring the superstars of yesterday, today, and tomorrow to your town. Not for a wrestling show, but an event that features action-packed in-ring wrestling, autograph, pose photo opportunities, Q&A sessions, and so much more. It's the best of sports and entertainment. The week of your event, we can add on to the endeavor with anti-bullying campaigns, library meet and greet reads, youth sport concussion seminars, and more. Our live events are fit for fans of any age from 5 to 95. This fall is part of our new Kids Club program. We offer live event experiences exclusively for the youngest of fans. On the flip side, we can produce a tailor-made event for fans of an older demographic as well. We work with you every step of the way to get the word out to fans near and far on our local television offerings and to over 50,000 fans and growing on our social media platforms. Your success is our success. If your group has had enough of candy bar and wrapping paper sales, 
and has the energy to team with our passionate fan base, bringing the NWF experience to your community is the answer to put smiles on faces while raising cash for your cause. Contact us today to get the ball rolling for your custom-made event that you'll want to bring back year after year to your community. Don't just take it from us. Here are the folks we've teamed up with in the past. on Sunday, December 9th. Be a part of the hype as NXT Live brings the action. See the hottest NXT superstars, including NXT champion Tommaso Ciampa, Adam Cole, Aleister Black, NXT Women's Champion Kyrie Say, EC3, Johnny Gargano, North American Champion Ricochet, Velveteen Dream, and many more live. It's NXT Live in Des Moines on Sunday, December 9th. Tickets are available.